Am I the a-hole for refusing to bake a cake for my sister and brother-in-law? I'm a guy and baking has always been my passion. It's something me and my mom used to do a lot growing up before she passed. My sister wasn't as into it as I was, and she liked it even less after mom passed away, but I continued learning. I'm not a professional, but I work part-time at a pastry shop while I finish college. It's something I'm teased about by my family sometimes, but I ignore them. My sister started dating her husband a few years back, and he joined the teasing too. I don't like him in general because he's kind of a prick and likes to make fun of me even more than my family. They are married now and have my nieces five. For the last couple years, my sister has asked me to bake birthday cakes for my niece, which I don't mind doing because I love my niece. And she's a fair critic when it comes to judging how good my cakes are, lol. They're gonna be celebrating their wedding anniversary soon, and she asked me if I can bake a special cake for them. But I told her no, because they both still make fun of me just because I enjoy baking. My niece is a different story because she's a kid, and this doesn't involve her. But I have more respect for myself than to make a cake for two people who like to tease me about doing something as girly and emasculating as baking in the kitchen. Something I told her even she sucks at. So they're both giving me crap over that because they really want to make this a special anniversary. Money's tight because of their financial troubles, and they wanted this one day to be perfect. My dad says I'm being too petty over this, and it's going to ruin the day for my sister and brother-in-law after the year they've had. Am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. Doesn't matter that they are family. You have a right to decide what you do and don't want to do. Plain and simple. They shouldn't be rude to someone they ask favors from. Why are they always family when they need something, but not when you do? Simple answer? They're a-holes. Not a hole You can't have your cake and eat it too. Perfect time for this saying. I hate that I didn't even realize that until now. Lol, it's too close to home. Good for you respecting yourself and respecting your skills. If one of the cakes they've been speaking down to you about ruins their special days, that says so much more about them, and about your father, than about you. Not today, Hall. Ha ha ha, baking is such a girly and stupid thing, and a waste of time and we treat you bad. But please use those skills that you worked years on to make us something special in our special day without us paying you. You are not today, Hall here. They are. Your reaction is absolutely right. I love that, after everything, you have been following this passion. This is the best summary of this post. OP, I wish you could make this your title. Next story is titled, Am I the a-hole for banning my brother from my house after I lost my dog? My brother was staying in the back house of my place because he was having a fight with his girlfriend and isn't staying in their apartment. My dog is outside during most of the day, and I told him a million times to close the damn gates when it comes to the house. Last Thursday, my brother went to his friend's house and got home at like 6 a.m. I was already gone for work and left my dog out in the yard. When I got home, the gate was wide open and my dog Maddie was nowhere to be found. It was so obvious it was my brother because I always remembered to close the gate after I pulled my car out. He denied it until I checked the front camera which clearly showed him coming in from the front and not bothering to close right behind him. I was so mad at my brother I told him to leave because I don't want him in my house anymore, and I went out to look for my dog. Got called up by my parents later on since he had to go to their place, and they yelled at me for not being a good brother, letting him not have a place to stay over my dog. They already know he messed up by ignoring the one thing I kept telling him to, but that's no excuse to ban him from my house. I don't know. I'm just mad he didn't listen to me and now my dog is gone. So far, I can't find him at any of the shelters. I'm losing hope and it makes me even more mad at my brother that I don't want to see him right now. But they keep saying that's too extreme and shouldn't hold it against him when he's needing some support right now. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. You have every right to say who is and isn't allowed to stay at your house. Should have apologized and tried to help you find your dog as well. Brother or not, if they caused the loss of my dog, is dead to me. Yep, there's no remorse or regret, no mention of an apology, and the brother hasn't even helped look for the dog. Not only did the brother mess up, he isn't doing a thing to help find a dog. Just went running to mummy and daddy because big bro was being mean. 
you are definitely not a hole. Your brother, on the other hand, is a massive a hole. All you requested from him was to close a gate when he enters your property, which is reasonable. He couldn't do so, and you lost a family member as a result. If your parents want to berate you so badly, they should just let him stay with them. Maybe he will leave a door open and a burglar would get inside. If I were OP, every instance in the future, I would leave everything wide open at the parents' house and see how quickly the parents' stance changes. Not today, Hull. It's like that meme, you had one job. Ed messed up. Ed is not homeless. Staying at your parents' home. In my opinion, let him stay there and mess things up over there. As for your parents pushing, supporting him emotionally, they should do that for you too. That they aren't is inconsiderate of them towards you. Going with not today, Hull. If it was literally the only thing you ask, you should have kept track of it. Sounds like you told him enough. Honestly, the lying about it would upset me more. Just be honest. Help me find a dog and we can get around it. But the lying is just so bad. I have to trust someone I have in my home. If I don't, they don't stay. Mistakes happen. Lies though, those are conscious decisions. Now for the next story. Am I the a-hole for not quitting my job so my nephew can go to a special needs school? I am a special needs teacher in the Netherlands. I teach students ages 12 and up. My nephew is highly intelligent, but he has autism. He cannot relate to other students, and even though he is really intelligent, he has the mental age of someone that is 7, even though his physical age is 12, so regular schools wouldn't be an option. A few years ago, I got a job as a special needs teacher specialized in autism. I love the school I work at have amazing co-workers, and I find the students to be very interesting in a positive way. This truly is my dream job, and unless something changes negatively, I could see myself working here until I retire. My sister-in-law and I don't get along. She hates the fact I can get along better with nephew than she can. To be honest, it is very hard to turn off the way I speak to people with autism, as it is what I do for five days a week. So I can't realistically turn it off when speaking to nephew. Due to this, he responds better to me than his mother. I have offered my sister-in-law some pointers on how to understand him better, but every time I did this, I got the same old excuse of, I'm his mother, I know better, you don't even have kids, so you don't know what you're talking about. In the Netherlands, there aren't many special needs high schools that focus primarily on HAVO and VWO. This is where I get the most enjoyment out of. In our immediate area, there is only one. The next closest one would be an hour commute every day. My nephew's getting to that age where he has to go to high school. He can do VWO, and this would also be realistic for him to pass. However, due to a rule in my school, teachers cannot have family members attending the school. He cannot go to my school. The next one over would be an hour commute for him by taxi. If he's lucky enough to get a taxi to himself, they are often shared. In the Netherlands, an hour commute by car is really uncommon. My sister-in-law came to me to ask if I could put in a good word for nephew, as there is more demand for special needs schools than there are special needs schools. I then told her I cannot do that and nephew couldn't go to my school, as that would mean I would have to quit because of the rule. My sister-in-law threw a fit, told me I don't want nephew to succeed, and that if she was in my shoes, she would have quit. I told her that this is my dream job and no amount of begging would change my mind. But if she wanted to, I could probably put in a good word for nephew at the other school, as many special needs school in the Netherlands have frequent contact. After this phone call, my sister-in-law called my wife, told her that I don't want nephew to succeed, and that she should consider a divorce. So am I the a-hole here? I know family should help each other, but I never thought this would mean giving up something I truly love to do. Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. You are willing to support with tips and guidance, and even reference to another school. But to ask you to quit is too far. There's a saying, you don't need to light yourself on fire to keep others warm. That applies here. Also, calling his wife telling her to divorce OP is juvenile. Personally, if I had a kid with special needs and someone I was related to could talk to my kid, I would be ecstatic for my kid. The fact that the sister-in-law is upset that he can talk to your kid is sad because she isn't thinking about what's best for her kid. 
I'm a speech therapist, and I have had relatives ask about their child. And when I pointed out some areas of concern, was outright dismissed. After they ask, unfortunately, I don't think the sister-in-law's behavior is that uncommon. It is inappropriate, but not that uncommon in my experience. When I first noticed some things wrong with my nephew, I was also dismissed right away. People rarely listen to family because they don't want to believe something is wrong with their kids. Not today, Hull. You shouldn't be made to feel bad about not quitting your dream job. That does seem like a weird rule, though. Do you know why that rule came about? Yeah, a couple of years ago before I even got there, there was a teacher who had her steps on in her class. She only paid attention to him, tried to make other students with special needs to solely work around his needs. Other parents complained, and the kid was transferred to another school. The teacher quit a week later. It was a whole drama, I'm told. Sounds like what they should have done was move the stepson into another classroom and under a different teacher. The school is too small. A special needs school only has 11 students in a class, and more often than not, only has around 100 to 130 students. This means that he would still be taught by her. Last story. Am I the a-hole for calling out my sister's partner? Background. I, 24 male, have two stepsisters, 28 female slash 32 female, who I'm very close to. We were raised together, and although we don't share the same parentage, we have always seen each other as siblings, to the point where we all dislike the term step-sibling, as we think it devalues our relationships. My eldest sister, Faith, has a partner who is considerably older than her. I believe he is in his early 40s, not sure exactly. This is not uncommon in our family. And whilst I find it a bit strange, as long as she's happy, that's all I really care about. Now, my family is huge and very close. Christmas slash Easter slash other family events will regularly have a headcount of 30 plus. These events are always very loud, very busy, and could easily seem quite intimidating if you're not used to that kind of environment. My partner has told me she felt very anxious about these events at first, but has since settled and loves the atmosphere. My sister's partner, we will call him Jake, has spent the past four years of their relationship actively avoiding these family events. He is the only child from a very small family who aren't particularly close, and he uses this as his reasoning for declining every single invitation extended to him. Nobody's particularly bothered by this, and nobody has gone out of their way to encourage him to join us. He declines, and we accept this without question. Recently, I was visiting Jake and Faith about an hour or so away. After a few drinks, Jake starts talking about how he feels that nobody in the family likes him, and it's sad that nobody makes an effort to come and see him and Faith. This is a common discussion he likes to bring up when we've been drinking for some reason, and not the first time we have had to have this conversation. I tried to avoid the subject, as in my opinion, he's had every invitation extended to him, so he's made it quite clear that he doesn't like to interact with us unless absolutely necessary. This goes on for about an hour or so before he says, It's like your family don't even care about Faith, my sister. This is where I snapped and essentially told him to grow the hell up. I said that if people wants to make an effort with him, he needs to grow some confidence and turn up to a few family events, and then people will start treating him as a member of the family. He said he can't go to these events because he has anxiety, to which I told him that's a poor excuse for being too lazy to make the effort. My sister has since told me that I was out of line, and that I shouldn't have said anything. I agree that calling him lazy was perhaps too far. I also suffer from anxiety that would have crushed me, but I'm not having someone tell me my family don't care about my sister. As far as I'm concerned, he has made no effort to integrate into the family, yet expects us to bend over backwards to make him feel welcome. Everyone sucks here. Yeah, he was a whiny brat. I'm from a similar type of family as you, and we have huge events, and we frequently joke about how new people need flashcards and how overwhelming our family parties can be. It does take a genuine effort to pull new people in and make them comfortable. The fact that no one in your family has tried to do that part is kind of a-holy. You took it way too far in your conversation with him, though, and while it sounds like you've realized you were in the wrong, it doesn't sound like you've apologized. My family have tried to bring him in closer. Perhaps I should have explained further. It's not like we expect him to just turn up and be fine with everything straight away. Much like your family, we are also aware that it can be intimidating. 
Over the course of four years, he has been invited to every family event, but has been to none. What else can we do? If he says he doesn't want to come, we aren't about to turn about his house and drag him along. Do you guys ever have smaller events? Had your sister invited a few of you over theirs to smaller events? There are some people who could never ever handle the kind of event you're talking about due to anxiety. It's not about trying or being lazy. It's not going to happen. I have no problem with him not attending the family event. I make the effort to come and visit, and have done multiple times. Nobody mentions the family events except for him. The only one making any complaints is him. I can't be held responsible for the fact that other family members don't come to visit them. I'm just sick of being the guy that has to sit there and listen to all of his issues, when I'm the one who makes the effort all the time. Everyone sucks here. This may be a controversial view, but you both didn't behave well. If the point that made you so angry was that he said your family don't care about your sister, then you should have reacted on that comment. Explain that that's not the case, not attacking him at his actions. He, on the other hand, shouldn't whine about being left out when he's the one avoiding the family. If his anxiety is that severe, he could invite some people, smaller groups, that makes him feel more comfortable. I understand why you reacted like that. But telling him he's lazy and should grow balls when he's anxiety, again if it's really that severe, wasn't the right way to go. To clarify on the anxiety point, his issues with big groups seem to only crop up where my family is concerned. He and I are both big music fans, and he has no problem going to festivals in groups of 20-somethings, shoulder-to-shoulder in a concert crowd of 20,000. 